Hello and welcome to the next screencast exploring the Networked Media Open Specifications project from AMWA. I'm Alex Rawcliffe. And I'm Andrew Bonney. NMOS is developed in line with the Joint Task Force for Network Media Reference Architecture from the EBU, SMPTE and Video Services Forum. It's been tested by members of the AMWA Networked Media Incubator project as part of their Phase 1 workshop in January 2016. And all of the work that we're talking about in these screencasts is currently a work in progress. In this screencast, we're going to talk about discovery and registration, exploring how NMOS can support small peer-to-peer -peer installations all the way up to large enterprise infrastructures. We'll look at the API interactions between things like the Node API covered in our first screencast and other APIs such as the Registration and Query APIs. The discovery and registration specification described here has been designed to operate in a number of different use cases. It's intended to support operation at different scales, so from two single devices that need to communicate with each other right up to a network of thousands. Where possible, existing internet standards are used, so for discovery we make use of the standards for DNS service discovery, and HTTP is used for all of the API communications. A key aspect of the specification is that the mandatory implementation for all nodes on the system is exactly the same, and allows for various different scales of operation. Throughout this specification, the internet standard for DNS service discovery is used to provide the discovery mechanism, no matter what the scale. In most deployments, multicast DNS would be used, but in the largest of systems, it may be desirable to use unicast DNS. As with the node discussed in the last screencast, all of the discovery APIs are accessed over HTTP. The NMOS discovery system can operate in one of two modes. The first of these is peer-to-peer, -peer, and that's intended for smaller or ad hoc deployments. For example, a camera and display being directly connected together, or a number of cameras being connected to a recorder for capturing an interview. Peer-to-peer -peer discovery mode uses multicast DNS for discovery, and then the Node API is used to provide rich information about the resources available on each node in the peer-to-peer -peer system. In most situations, a registry-backed architecture is preferred, as this can be used at any scale. In this case, MDNS, or unicast DNS, is used to discover the registration and query API as part of the discovery system. The query API then provides the rich descriptions of flows, senders and other resources as the node API did in the peer-to-peer -peer case. By holding data in a distributed registry and accessing it via the query API, it is possible to scale this registry-backed architecture to any size of system required. This means that for low-powered nodes, which can't handle a large number of requests, the query API is able to take over this responsibility for them. This diagram illustrates the key components in an NMOS registry-backed registration and discovery system. The first thing to notice is that there are multiple registration and discovery instances. These could be distributed across different network segments or subnets, with routable traffic used to replicate information between each registry. Each registration and discovery instance exposes two APIs which are used for communication with nodes and other clients that are interacting with the registration and discovery system. Finally, the whole registration and discovery architecture is designed to scale using the normal methods you might use for web application scaling. For example, all of the APIs are HTTP based and would scale with HTTP load balancing. The first of the APIs exposed by a registration and discovery instance is the registration API. All nodes in the system must keep the registration API updated at all times with details of the resources that they expose. Additionally, the registration API provides a heartbeat mechanism. Nodes must poll this resource regularly in order to maintain their presence in the registry system. Where the registration API provides a means to write into the registry, the query API provides means to read from it. Here, nodes and other browsing interfaces are capable of finding out information about all of the other nodes and the resources they expose in the system. The query API provides HTTP accessible endpoints, but additionally a WebSocket accessible endpoint in order to provide a live view of what is going on in the system and the registry state. The registration API, as described here, produces an MDNS advertisement onto the network, advertising its presence. When a node discovers a registration API, it must inform it about all of its resources. In order to do this, it makes several POST requests to the slash resource entity. 
as shown here, a node is posting details about itself to this resource. In this case, the type is node, which came from the self resource of the node API as described in the last screencast. And within the data object, all of the details from the node API are included. Alternatively, if the node was advertising details of a device, a source or other data, the type would be changed to match that, and the data contained would be an object representing that source, flow, device or other resource. If a node stops advertising a particular resource, such as a sender becomes unavailable, it must delete it from the registration API. Finally, in order to maintain its presence in the registry, the node must regularly poll the node health resource in order to inform the registry of its presence. If at any point a node fails to provide a health update within a fixed period of time, it will be removed from the registry along with all of its resources. As with the registration API, the query API makes its presence known via an MDNS announcement. Clients which require details of nodes or other resources throughout the system can identify them via this query API. As shown, the structure of the query API is very similar to that of the node API discussed in the last screencast. Individual resources are available for each of nodes, sources, flows, devices, senders and receivers. Within any one of these resources, a list is available containing all of the flows, for example, that are present in a system. As well as providing access to these resources via one-shot requests, the Query API subscription mechanism can also be used to maintain a live view of the system. By making a post to the subscriptions resource, a WebSocket connection can be enabled, which will provide details about a particular resource path. This diagram illustrates the sequence of events to make a node discoverable when it comes online. Two scenarios are illustrated. On the right, Registration in the presence of a registration API, which has announced itself using an MDNS advertisement. On the left, a registration API is not present. In both cases, the first action by the node is to see if an MDNS advert from a registration API is present. If an advert is found, the node proceeds to register with the API by posting resources into the registration HTTP endpoint. If a registration API is not present, as on the left, the node makes use of the text record field in its MDNS advertisement to announce the presence of its resources. That's it for this screencast. Next time, we'll be talking about connection management, understanding how interaction with the node and query API can enable clients to form connections between senders and receivers. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about the specifications that we've talked about in this screencast, you can go to the Amwork TV GitHub. Alternatively, members of the Amwork Network Media Incubator project can find more detail on the Amwork.tv project page and also on resources held by the project. Finally, for information on the JTNM reference architecture, go to jt-nm.org.